Hi, it's Vicki Stark. I'm just reaching out. I just really wanted to talk to you. I've been sort of laying low for the past month since I broke my arm. Um, and I feel like I just really wanted to touch base with you um, and tell you about some things that I've been thinking about. Um, one of the big things that just, I mean, it, maybe it seems very obvious, but that really has struck me recently is how wife abandonment syndrome and your husband leaving took a hit out of your identity. And I know that that's, yeah, duh. Yeah, of course it took a hit out of my identity, but that's really huge. It's almost even bigger than the betrayal, the loss of your best friend or your partner, the change of your future, the, you know, all of the other aspects of your life changing, maybe your financial situation changing, but really at the core is our identity and how we think of ourselves. Um, and you may have identified yourself as a wife for a very long time. And it defines who you are and what your role is in the world. Um, and for those of you who were a, or were or are a stay-at-home mom or or you know who didn't work outside the home, and your identity was really the household and the marriage and the family. And for people who don't have an, an established um, secondary identity as a particular kind of worker um, or even as a mom, um, it can be very, very hard to now be thrown into a world where you have to reframe your identity out of what? You know, you don't know what you're going to be um, creating this new identity out of. And, you know, as, over the many years I've worked with women of all different ages, but, you know, particularly for those of you who are in your late 50s or 60s or 70s and feel like, wow, you know, now I have to start over and I have to change my identity or I have to create an identity. Whereas I had a very fixed, clear identity when I was married. So I think that's why for some people, it takes a very long time to recover from wife abandonment syndrome um, because that loss of identity is not so easy to rectify. Um, but I think that it is possible for you to start exploring those things that used to have meaning to you, maybe even before your marriage. You know, if you used to sing in a choir, for example, and you like singing and you might wanna join a choir and then you can add that little piece to your identity. You know, I'm Vicky and I sing in a women's barbershop choir, as some of you may know I did after my husband left. Um, or, you know, you might want to take up a sport or a tennis or something, or, or get a, a dog or a cat. You know, in some way, each of these little building blocks help fill up your life. Um, and, you know, you also might want to explore, pardon me, bigger things like a, a school, going back to school and studying something or volunteering. If you are able, you know, if you're in a financial position where you don't need to work, you know, if you volunteered and helped people and felt as though you were contributing to the world, that's a beautiful way to start slowly rebuilding your identity. So today, I just wanted to mention this topic because it's super huge and we don't really talk about it that much, um, but that that's something that you're in control of. If your husband is gone and you're left on your own, you're in control of rebuilding this identity and having the determination and the resilience and the courage to say, okay, here I am, you know, I'm not cooking dinners every night for him. Um, and 
I'm not planning vacations together as a couple, um, but I'm still alive and I still have a future. And I'm going to not let what happened rob me of my future. And that's within your control. So I just want to say hi, tell you I'm thinking about you um, and raise this topic of identity. And if you have any thoughts about it, if you could leave it below in the comments, I'd love to hear what you think about it. So that's us for today. Take care. <laughs>